I've spent the last three months testing out all kinds of note-taking apps for iPads. There were some complicated ones, some that were way too simple, and some that were just broken. But this video is about the best ones. iPads aren't really interesting devices. They're the only thing that Apple make that give you three forms of input, touch, Apple Pencil, and if you like it, keyboard and mouse. And that makes them full of potential when it comes to finding something that works for your specific note-taking style. In this video, we'll take a look at the best note-taking apps that I've found in my testing. We'll look at handwritten versus type notes, as well as the apps I'd recommend for more visual thinkers versus people who prefer more data-oriented note-taking. We'll also look at free versus paid apps and start to think about how some of them can work particularly well if you combo them together. I'd uh, better get on with it, eh? <laughs> Now, there are some important questions to ask when it comes to picking a note-taking app that works for you. Firstly, will you need to access your notes offline? Maybe you're gonna be recalling notes in a Wi-Fi free zone or plan to be writing stuff up on public transport. Even some of the biggest names in this space actually won't let you work offline. So yeah, just keep an eye on that. Secondly, how important is it to you to take notes by typing them versus being able to handwrite notes or even just annotate things like PDFs? Some of these apps will let you do one or the other, some let you do both. Finally, do you like total freedom in how you organize your information or do you prefer the comfort of a built-in structure and a framework to work within? Now, if you can answer those questions, it should make it pretty easy to find something that's gonna work for you. Now, I should say up front, there are two apps I'm not even gonna mention here, even though they do have a big following. Evernote and also OneNote. And yes, I've tried them both multiple times. In fact, I used to be a diehard Evernote user, but honestly, I really don't like either of them. And I wanted to make sure that everything I'm gonna show you here is something I would personally recommend. First up, we've got some free apps. The first two are from Apple and work across the whole Apple ecosystem. Importantly, if you've got an iPad at home and you do most of your note-taking on a Windows machine at work, feel free to skip this bit. But if you're all in on Mac, these might be worth a closer look. I really think Apple Notes has come on leaps and bounds in the last few years. It's really minimal, it's easy to get started, and it syncs across all your Apple devices that use iCloud pretty much seamlessly. Now, if you've come to note-taking and productivity via something more complicated like Notion, you might wanna think about simplifying things with Apple Notes. It's actually a bit of a dark horse. It ticks the box of typed versus handwritten notes. In fact, arguably the easiest way to take notes in a hurry is the swipe up from bottom right command on an iPad, which starts a quick note, which you can then add to later on. You can add multimedia really easily and also enhance text with lots of different formats and it works really well offline. The search facility is pretty good and accurate. And although at the time of making this video, Apple intelligence hasn't been released yet, all signs point to that making Apple Notes pretty powerful. More on that in a future video. Another Apple-only app that I've been using for a while now is Freeform. Now on paper, it's a digital whiteboarding app, but like Notes, it syncs across all your devices seamlessly and lets you organize your thoughts in a really visual way. Now, if your notes happen to be more on the visual side, don't discount Freeform as a genuine note-taking app. It's missing some of the more enhanced features that we'll see in the other whiteboarding apps later in this video, but it is free and like Apple Notes, it's really easy to pick up. There's a couple of other note-taking apps that are also free, but have a much steeper learning curve. And yeah, we probably should talk about Notion. Now, I almost didn't include Notion because I found that the whole thing has become quite slow and a little bit bloated lately. A little bit like me, actually. And it doesn't have any kind of offline access and the dream that they sell you of being like a productivity Lego set that lets you build your own little collection of dashboards and areas to measure, it is possible. But for mere mortals with not much time on their hands, it just isn't really achievable. On the other hand, it does offer a solid free to use experience and it does let you combine things like type notes, lists, toggles, images and videos, just not handwritten notes. Now, if you don't mind the constraint of organizing your notes in what is essentially a massive collection of databases masquerading as web pages, Notion might be worth a play. Just make sure you don't fall into the trap of spending more time setting it up than using it to actually take notes though. Now, if you want things like AI and unlimited uploads, you will have to pay them a monthly fee for the privilege. Another app that's really popular is Obsidian. And again, I almost didn't put it in because it's wildly different from my personal note-taking preferences, but 
it's free, it works offline and across multiple platforms. And if your kind of note taking is mainly text based and requires lots of links, maybe you're researching for a PhD or writing a book, there's loads of really great features here that let you organize your information and then connect it all together in pretty much the same way your brain works. Let me show you what I mean. Now, if you boil this app down, it's basically a text editor. Each note is just a text file that you can add markdown formatting to. Now, if you don't know what markdown down formatting is. It's basically the same sort of thing that you'll see in places like Slack and Discord, where you can easily format text by typing certain commands. So if we add a couple of notes here to a blank Obsidian data set, we can link some connected topics. And this shows us the main note. In this case, I'm writing an article about coffee. And then here are two other notes that I've made that are connected to it. But then if we look at this graph view, all these other nodes appear. Now these are related, but they don't yet exist as notes. I think this is a really interesting way of visualizing information in that it highlights all the things you might want to fill in to enhance your knowledge about a particular topic. Now imagine this, but spun out into an entire second brain's worth of notes about a PhD topic or an online course, and you'll see why I thought this might be worth looking at. It is complex, but there's a huge online following with tons of ideas that you can get inspiration from. Let's get into some of the paid apps that I'd recommend. Now, most of these will give you free access with limits to give them a try. So if you like anything you see here, yeah, I'll leave some links below. Let's look at some stuff for visual thinkers next. Now I've recommended this next app to so many people, I've kind of lost count. This is Milanote. It's a really great all rounder with tons of flexibility. Milanote is another whiteboard style app that's a bit like Evernote for creative. You might think it's duplicating what Freeform can do, but I actually think it's quite a bit richer as an experience. It lets you add things like notes, files, lists, images, videos, and more, and then arrange those things in whatever way you like. Just as an example, here's a branding project I'm working on for a patisserie business. So from our initial meeting, we were able to highlight some color and branding guidelines and then collect inspiration from other accounts in the industry. From there, we could easily zoom out and explore patterns and themes, and then look at building out a shot list and then a shooting sequence in this table so that we can be really organized on the day of the product shoot. I was also able to invite the client and my photographer buddy to collaborate on the board so that we all know what's happening and what we're aiming for on the project. And you can even set due dates on any tasks and then assign them to different people. So it can also double as a team management tool for projects and any creative assignments. Milano also works offline, which is another tick in the box for me. And it also lets you draw all over your whiteboards if you like to annotate. One of the big things I love about Milano is the huge collection of templates that you can access here. And also you can save your own. I made this one for planning out my YouTube videos and it's got multiple boards within boards that are ready for me to start working on when inspiration strikes. Miller Notes completely free to try out if you head to my link in the description. Next up, we have Craft. Between Milanote and this one, they've kind of become my default alternative to Notion these days. Now, Milanote helps me organize all my creative projects, whereas Craft tends to be more suited to document-based notes. It's organized in this gorgeous interface where rather than a dull list of files, you get these visual cards. It's so beautiful, in fact, they won an App Store Award for Apple of the Year in 2021, as well as being a finalist in Apple's Design Awards. AI is all baked in and it's powered by OpenAI's latest ChatGPT model so you can just use it for writing assistance and summarizing documents really easily and unlike notion it's really fast it works offline and it lets you use apple pencil to scribble and mark up documents like pdfs they've even made an apple vision pro app which is pretty wild. You can try it out for free and that lets you create up to 10 documents. And then after that, it's $8 a month for a personal plan. And finally, I haven't forgotten all you handwritten note fans. Obviously you'll be needing an iPad and an Apple pencil here. And I'd also recommend slapping a paper-like screen protector on just to give you a bit of resistance when you're writing. People tend to say this feels like paper, which I don't really think it does, but I promise it is so much more satisfying than writing on naked glass. Now this year, Paperlite released a new accessory in this tiny little envelope. This is a custom set of pencil tips that you can add to your Apple Pencil. These add even more resistance and kind of roughness when you're writing or drawing. And actually the combination of having the screen protector and these little pencil tips 
do actually feel like using a real pencil. I haven't taken these off since I tried them out about a month ago, so yeah, I would definitely recommend. I've left a link in the description if you want to take a look and build yourself a little paper-like bundle. Now, app-wise, when it comes to handwritten notes, my top choice is GoodNotes. I've tried some others too, like Notability and Freenote, but this one just works best for me. They've just recently moved to a subscription model with GoodNotes version 6. It works offline as well as across all your devices too, which is pretty good if you want to check on your handwritten notes from your laptop or your phone at any point. Now, you can use this in tons of different ways. Notes are captured in a notebook and you can have as many of these as you want. Your virtual paper can take many forms too, including a bunch of useful templates that they provide in the app. Now, alongside notes, you can also import ad hoc PDF files if you want to annotate them and then return them to other people or maybe even embed them in your notebooks. GoodNotes doesn't just let you make handwritten notes. You can type text, draw shapes, add contents pages and stickers, and also intelligently search through your notes. And yes, even if like me, you have terrible handwriting. Most recently, they added things like tape. So if you're trying to revise a topic, you can add this virtual tape over your notes and then just tap to reveal it. Really good for flashcards and revision. I'd have absolutely loved this when I was in school. Matter of fact, there are some cool AI features built in to help you study, like these exam prep worksheets that have guided tuition. And finally, you can capture audio alongside your notes and then play that back along with your live note taking to find and revisit things like conferences and meeting action points right from your notes page. So let's round up with my top three from all of these that I'd recommend using. Firstly, Milano has been a bit of a revelation for me and my note taking. The way it so neatly let you map out your ideas and projects fits in super easily with a lot of my workflows as well as how I like to think. Secondly, GoodNotes helps me record count the scribbles from meetings and catalog them, and I've been using it for over five years. Although most of my notes end up somewhere else, there is something about being able to write a note by hand that is just inescapable, and this combination has helped me move to a fully paperless setup in all my work. Finally, Apple Note is my go-to scratch pad. If I ever need to quickly get something down, whether it's a sketch or a link or an idea, it's always there. Folks, it feels like at the moment, there's a new note-taking app born every minute. So if there are any other great apps here that I've missed out, let me know in the comments and I might make a follow-up or a deep dive into one of these options. Meanwhile, if you're interested in seeing what types of keyboard work best on an iPad for taking in tight notes, you'd be fooled by thinking that Apple's mega expensive Magic Keyboard is your best buy. There's a full rundown of all the alternatives that I've found right over here. See you next time.